Meet Calvin Coolidge, our 30th president. Calvin Coolidge was born on the 4th of July, 1872, to John and Victoria Coolidge in the small hamlet of Plymouth Notch, Vermont. He was born in this room and in this bed. Coolidge's father was a dairy farmer and a storekeeper who instilled in young Calvin a strong work ethic. His mother, Victoria, instilled in him a love of nature and books. He attended Amherst College. While there, he won first prize in an essay contest sponsored by the National Society Sons of the American Revolution. While studying at Amherst, he told a friend, I believe that I am and always will be a Republican. After college, he became a lawyer, not by attending law school, but by learning law at an established law firm in Northampton, Massachusetts. His apprenticeship took two years and he was admitted to the bar in 1887. He was very interested in politics. He ran for office 17 times, only losing once his first campaign for school board. After being governor of Massachusetts, Warren G. Harding picked him as his running mate in the presidential campaign of 1921. Harding's presidency was a short one, however. He died suddenly in the middle of the night, August 3, 1923. Coolidge was visiting his father's farm in Plymouth Notch in this room when he received word that Harding had died. Coolidge's father, a notary public, administered the oath of office to his son. Here, at 2.47 a.m. in the living room of the farm by lamplight. A phone call had been placed to Washington, D.C. to confirm that Colonel John Coolidge, a notary public, had sufficient authority to administer the presidential oath of office. It remains the only time a father has sworn in his son as President of the United States. Coolidge was the first president to have a speech broadcast over the radio. He reduced income taxes and granted citizenship to all Native Americans born in the United States. Coolidge often spoke in favor of the civil rights of African Americans, saying in his first State of the Union address that their rights were, quote, just as sacred as those of any other citizen under the U.S. Constitution and it was a public and private duty to protect those rights. In 1924, Coolidge's son, Calvin Jr., died at age 16 from blood poisoning in the White House, a week before he had played tennis on the White House tennis courts without socks and had developed a blood blister on his toe. The blister became sepsis and Calvin Jr. died a week later. President Coolidge was never the same. He decided not to run for re-election, telling reporters that if he took another term, he would be in the White House until 1933. 10 years in Washington is longer than any other man has had it. Too long, he said. Also, his son's death took a lot of the joy out of it for him. He died on January 5th, 1933, from a heart attack. He is buried in the family cemetery in Plymouth Notch. <laughs>